Haile Selassie I, Emperor of Ethiopia from 1930 to 1974, played a pivotal role in Ethiopian history and the Rastafari movement. As regent plenipotentiary for Empress Zutatu, he ascended to power in 1916. Belonging to the Solomonic dynasty, which claims lineage to Emperor Menelik I, he is revered by Rastafarians as a key figure. Haile Selassie pursued modernization through political and social reforms, including the abolition of slavery and the introduction of Ethiopia's first written constitution in 1931. Despite his efforts, Ethiopia fell to Italian occupation, leading to his exile in England. He returned in 1941 and dissolved the Ethiopia Eritrea Federation, fighting against secession. Haile Selassie actively participated in international affairs, co-founding the Organization of African Unity in 1963. In 1974, he was overthrown and subsequently assassinated. While considered a messiah by some Rastafarians, he remained a devout Christian. At the age of 13, Tafari was appointed as the Dejazmach of Gera Malata by his father on November 1, 1905. Dejazmach, meaning, keeper of the door, denoted a noble title similar to a count. On September 27, 1916, he was declared Crown Prince and Regent Plenipotentiary, assuming the name Rast Tafari Makoan on February 11, 1917. Ras, meaning head, represented a rank of nobility akin to a duke or prince. In 1928, he was granted the title of Negus or king, without specific geographic limitations. Following Empress Zutata's death, Tafari was crowned Negusa Negast, or emperor, on November 2, 1930, taking the regnal name Haile Selassie I, highly signified power of, in Guizi, while Selassie meant, trinity thus translating to, power of the trinity. Haile Selassie held various appellations, including Janhoi, Talakumeri, Abba Tekel, and was revered by the Rastafari movement as Ja, Ja Rastafari, and him, His Imperial Majesty. Born on July 23, 1892, in Ejersa Ethiopia, Haile Selassie descended from the Shiwan Amhara Solomonic king and claimed lineage to Menelik I, the son of King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba, Tafari and his cousin, Imra Haile Selassie, received education in horror from a Capuchin friar and a surgeon. At the age of 13, Tafari was appointed de Jasmic, a title equivalent to, Count, while his father passed away in 1906. He became the governor of Selail and later governed part of Sidamo in 1907, continuing his studies alongside his responsibilities. It is believed that Tafari married Wazero Altayek during his late teens and had a daughter named Princess Romanwork. When his brother Yelma died in 1907, Tafari was appointed governor of Harar in 1910 or 1911. He married Menin Asfa of Ambassal on August 3, 1911. Tafari played a significant role in the movement that deposed Lij Ayasu, who was replaced by Empress Zutatu. Tafari became Ras, the crown prince, and regent plenipotentiary. He assumed de facto control of the Ethiopian Empire, while Zutatu served as empress. On February 11, 1917, Zutatu's coronation took place, solidifying Tafari's role as her regent. While Tafari appeared more prominent, Zutatu held substantial power as the ultimate decision-maker. Tafari faced the challenges of daily administration, but his authority was limited, making his efforts often futile against the combined influence of the Empress, the Minister of War, and Provincial Governors. During his regency, Tafari continued Menelik II's cautious modernization policy. He also survived the 1918 flu pandemic. In 1923, he secured Ethiopia's admission to the League of Nations by promising to eradicate slavery, a practice that persisted despite previous proclamations. Tafari embarked on a tour of Europe and the Middle East in 1924, accompanied by notable figures. Although his primary goal of gaining access to the sea was not realized, he inspected various institutions and remained cautious of European pressure. Throughout his travels, Tafari and his entourage garnered great attention and were welcomed with enthusiasm, 
the media sensationalized the Ethiopian delegation's oriental dignity and distinctive attire. Tafari even presented lions as gifts and received the imperial crown of Emperor Tuadros II in return. This tour inspired numerous anecdotes and left a lasting impression. During this period, the crown prince made a significant humanitarian gesture by adopting 40 Armenian orphans who had suffered during the Armenian Genocide. He provided them with musical education and formed the Imperial Brass Band with them. Tafari faced a challenge to his authority in 1928 when Dejazmik Balcha Safo arrived in Addis Ababa with a substantial armed force. Despite opposition from Menelik's former appointees, Tafari asserted control over the provinces. Balcha Safo, the governor of Sidamo province, posed a particular problem with his misrepresentation of revenues. Tafari called him back to Addis Ababa, where Balcha Safo showed disrespect towards Tafari. Eventually, Tafari managed to replace him and maintain his authority, Empress Zudatu tried to have Tafari charged with treason for his dealings with Italy, including a peace accord. In September, palace reactionaries attempted a coup against Tafari, but it failed. The support of the people and the police remained with Tafari, leading to his crowning as king on October 7, 1928. The crowning sparked controversy as Tafari occupied the same territory as the Empress, which had never happened before in Ethiopian history. Conservatives were discontented, leading to the rebellion of Ras Gugsaweli. However, Gugsaweli was defeated, and news of his defeat was quickly followed by the sudden death of Empress Zudatu in April 1930. Upon Zudatu's death, Tafari ascended to the throne and was proclaimed Emperor of Ethiopia. His coronation on November 2, 1930, was a grand event attended by dignitaries from around the world. The celebration incurred significant expenses, and many attendees received lavish gifts. The event was documented by various sources, including British author Evelyn Waugh and American travel lecturer Burton Holmes. These events marked the culmination of Tafari's journey from Regency to becoming Emperor Haile Selassie, a significant figure in Ethiopian history. On July 16, 1931, Haile Selassie introduced Ethiopia's first written constitution, which established a bicameral legislature. While it maintained power in the hands of the nobility, it also set democratic standards among them, envisioning a transition to democratic rule when the people were capable of electing themselves. However, the provision limiting the throne's succession to Haile Selassie's descendants faced opposition from other dynastic princes, including those from Tigray and his loyal cousin, Ras Kassa Haile Darj, in 1932. The Sultanate of Jima was officially incorporated into Ethiopia following the death of Sultan Abba Jafar II. During the 1930s, Ethiopia became the target of renewed Italian imperialist ambitions. Benito Mussolini's fascist regime sought revenge for Italy's past defeats and aimed to erase the memory of the failed conquest of Ethiopia. Italy saw Ethiopia as a stepping stone to connect its Eritrean and Italian Somaliland possessions. The League of Nations' involvement proved futile as Italy invaded Ethiopia in 1935, despite Ethiopia's membership. The Horlaval Pact scandal exposed the League's allies' appeasement schemes towards Italy. In response, Haile Selassie mobilized his forces, rallying his armies in Des and issuing a call to resist the Italian invasion. His mobilization order emphasized the importance of defending Ethiopia and warned against passivity. The order also highlighted the need to support the troops and offered exemptions for goods sold to the military. Haile Selassie's determination to defend Ethiopia against Italian aggression marked a critical chapter in his reign, on October 19, 1935. Haile Selassie issued precise orders to his commander-in-chief, Ras Kassa, for the army's actions, tents should be set up in caves, near trees, and in woods, maintaining a distance of 30 cubits between each tent. When airplanes are spotted, troops should avoid open roads and meadows, instead moving through valleys, trenches, and zigzag routes with trees and woods for cover. When an airplane descends to drop bombs, soldiers with designated weapons should fire a well-coordinated volley and disperse quickly. A few hits can bring down the plane. To avoid detection when the plane rises again, 
soldiers should remain cautiously scattered until it is reasonably distant. During war, it is wise to wear inconspicuous attire and avoid valuable items to deter enemy fire. Decorations can be worn later, Haile Selassie assures his soldiers that he is ready to shed his blood for Ethiopia's freedom. In the progress of the war, the Italian invasion of Ethiopia began in October 1935, but the Ethiopian forces launched a successful, Christmas offensive, in November, forcing the Italians onto the defensive. However, subsequent battles such as Amba Aradam, Tembien, and Shire resulted in the defeat of the Ethiopian armies. Haile Selassie himself led a counterattack at the Battle of Mechu but was ultimately defeated. As the situation became dire, Haile Selassie embarked on a risky pilgrimage to the churches at Lalabella for fasting and prayer. Afterward, the government decided to relocate to Gore, and the imperial family departed for French Somaliland and then Jerusalem to safeguard their safety and the preservation of the imperial house. After much debate, it was agreed that Haile Selassie should accompany his family into exile and present Ethiopia's case to the League of Nations in Geneva. The decision faced opposition, including from nobleman Blada Tekol Wolde Hawariot, who objected to an Ethiopian monarch fleeing an invading force. Haile Selassie appointed his cousin Ras Imra Haile Selassie as Prince Regent and departed with his family for French Somaliland on May 2, 1936. On May 5, Marshal Pietro Badoglio led Italian troops into Addis Ababa, and Mussolini declared Ethiopia an Italian province. The Ethiopian exiles sailed aboard the British cruiser HMS Enterprise from French Somaliland to Jerusalem, a symbolic choice due to the Solomonic dynasty's claim to the House of David. From Jerusalem, Haile Selassie and his entourage sailed on the British cruiser HMS Cape Town to Gibraltar, where he stayed at the Rock Hotel before transferring to an ordinary liner to spare the UK government from a state reception. Haile Selassie addressed the League of Nations after Italy withdrew its delegation on May 12, 1936. Italian journalists in the galleries jeered, but they were removed from the hall. Haile Selassie delivered his speech majestically in Amharic, denouncing Italy's use of chemical weapons on his people while European states refused aid to Ethiopia. He exposed the Italian command's method of aerial spraying, creating a deadly rain to systematically exterminate living creatures and poison the land and water, recognizing the vast power disparity between his small nation of 12 million people and Italy's 42 million, armed with deadly weapons, Haile Selassie emphasized that aggression threatened all small states and rendered them vassals without collective action. He warned the League of Nations that their judgment would be remembered by God and history. He stressed the importance of collective security, international morality, and the value of treaty signatures. Despite being named Man of the Year by Time in 1935 and hailed by anti-fascists worldwide, the League only imposed limited sanctions on Italy. During his exile in Bath, England, Haile Selassie diligently wrote his life story while residing at Fairfield House. He also briefly stayed in Worthing and Wimbledon, and his presence in Malvern was commemorated with a blue plaque. During this period, Haile Selassie actively countered Italian propaganda by exposing the true state of Ethiopian resistance and the illegal occupation. He vehemently denounced the desecration of religious sites and historical treasures, including the theft of a 1,600-year-old imperial obelisk, while condemning the atrocities inflicted upon Ethiopian civilians. Haile Selassie persistently sought League intervention and expressed his unwavering belief in divine justice that would eventually hold both the weak and mighty accountable. Although he initially faced difficulties garnering international support, his pleas resonated with African-American organizations in the United States sympathetic to the Ethiopian cause. Despite personal tragedies, including the loss of family members, Haile Selassie persevered. After his return to Ethiopia, he generously donated Fairfield House as a residence for the elderly and unveiled commemorative blue plaques in Bath and Weston Super Mare. During the 1940s and 1950s, Haile Selassie collaborated with British forces, including Ethiopian backed African and South African troops, to liberate Ethiopia. Imperial proclamations were issued, highlighting the unity between British military power and the Emperor's popular support. 
In January 1941, Haile Selassie crossed the border into Ethiopia, joining the Gideon force already present. The joint effort of the United Kingdom, Commonwealth of Nations, Free France, Free Belgium, and Ethiopian patriots defeated Italy. On May 5, 1941, Haile Selassie returned to Addis Ababa and addressed the Ethiopian people, emphasizing peace and unity. After World War II, Ethiopia became a founding member of the United Nations, and in 1950, the Federation of Eritrea into Ethiopia was established. Despite challenges to implement reforms, Haile Selassie pursued progressive tax schemes and worked towards the autocephaly of the Ethiopian Orthodox Tuahedo Church, resulting in the elevation of the Abuna to Patriarch Catholicos in 1959. In 1948, the Harari Muslims of Harar, along with Somali allies, launched a significant rebellion against the empire, prompting a violent response from the state. Numerous arrests were made, and the entire town of Harar was placed under house arrest. The government seized control of assets and estates owned by the people, resulting in a large-scale exodus of Hararis from the Harari region, an unprecedented event in their history. The Harari dissatisfaction stemmed from the unfulfilled promise of limited autonomy for Harar made by Menelik II after his conquest, which was gradually undermined by successive Amhara governors. Historians Tim Carmichael and Roman Loymeyer assert that Haile Selassie directly participated in suppressing the Harari movement, formed in response to the crackdown on Hararis who had collaborated with the Italians during their occupation of Ethiopia from 1935 to 1941. Adhering to his advocacy for collective security, Haile Selassie dispatched a contingent known as the Kagnu Battalion, led by General Mulegeta Bulai, to support the United Nations command in the Korean War. In a 1954 speech, Haile Selassie hailed Ethiopian participation in the Korean War as a redemption of the principles of collective security, emphasizing his belief in the righteousness of his course and expressing gratitude for the vindication of that principle through their joint action in Korea. During the Silver Jubilee celebrations in November 1955, Haile Selassie introduced a revised constitution that maintained his effective power while extending political participation by establishing an elected lower house of parliament. However, party politics were not included in the framework. The spread of modern educational methods was prioritized, and the country embarked on development and modernization plans, blending Ethiopian traditions within the ancient monarchical structure of the state, Haile Selassie made compromises with traditionalists in the nobility and church and sought to improve relations with various ethnic groups. Autonomy was granted to challenging to control Afar lands. However, his efforts to end feudalism were hampered by the slow pace of reforms and compromises made with the entrenched aristocracy. The revised constitution of 1955 has faced criticism for reinforcing the indisputable power of the monarch, while leaving peasants relatively powerless, Haile Selassie maintained amicable relations with the United Kingdom through charitable gestures. He provided aid to the British government in 1947 during heavy flooding, expressing sympathy and cooperation through a letter to the National Distress Fund. In 1959, he donated his exile residence, Fairfield House in Bath, to the city of Bath for the benefit of the elderly. In the summer of 1958, a severe famine devastated the Tigray province in northern Ethiopia for two years, with little awareness in Addis Ababa. In September 1959, when news of the widespread deaths reached the Ministry of Interior, the central government disclosed the information and appealed for aid. The emperor himself donated 2,000 tons of relief grain, and the U.S. sent 32,000 tons distributed in Eritrea and Tigray. Despite efforts, an estimated 100,000 people had already perished by the famine's end in August 1961, attributed to drought, locusts, hailstorms, and disease outbreaks. During the 1960s, Haile Selassie contributed Ethiopian troops to the UN peacekeeping force in the Congo and faced an unsuccessful coup attempt. He also supported decolonization in Africa and resisted European attempts to govern Eritrea separately, leading to the dissolution of the Federation and the start of the Eritrean struggle for independence in 1961. In 1961, 
Haile Selassie attended the Conference of Non-Aligned Countries in Belgrade, considered the founding conference of the Non-Aligned Movement. The Eritrean War of Independence erupted, with tensions between Eritreans seeking independence and Ethiopian forces. Eritrea's parliament voted to become part of Ethiopia, but the conflict persisted for 30 years. In 1963, Haile Selassie played a key role in establishing the Organization of African Unity OAU, and was elected as its first chairperson. He also advocated for the United States of Africa concept. Haile Selassie addressed the United Nations, emphasizing the principle of collective security and the need for peaceful coexistence. He attended President Kennedy's funeral and met with President Johnson. In 1966, his attempt to implement a progressive income tax system faced resistance, sparking revolt. Haile Selassie supported UN-approved collective security operations but criticized the Vietnam War and commended the U.S. for its civil rights legislation. In 1967, Haile Selassie visited Montreal, Canada, to inaugurate the Ethiopian Pavilion at Expo 67 World's Fair, where he received praise from world leaders. Student unrest and the rise of communism among the intelligentsia posed challenges in the 1960s and 1970s. Resistance from conservative elements and the Ethiopian Orthodox Church hindered land reform efforts and damaged the government's reputation, leading to resentment among the peasants. Haile Selassie delegated domestic governance to Prime Minister Akhlilu Habt-Wold and focused more on foreign affairs. Despite domestic challenges, he maintained international prestige, attending significant events like state funerals and summits. He visited Italy and China, meeting notable leaders. Human rights under Haile Selassie's rule were criticized, with limited civil liberties and political rights. Famine in Wallow and Tigray regions from 1972 to 1974 resulted in significant deaths and aid influx, contributing to the destabilization of Haile Selassie's regime. Amidst these circumstances, a group of dissident army officers initiated a gradual coup against the weakening regime of Emperor Haile Selassie. Aware of the public's continued reverence for the emperor, they devised a plan to exploit the situation. They acquired a copy of the film, The Unknown Famine, and spliced it with footage of Haile Selassie partaking in a lavish wedding feast at his palace, renaming it, The Hidden Hunger. This dark film was broadcast incessantly on Ethiopian television, coinciding with the day the officers finally gathered the courage to seize the emperor. Reports differ on whether Haile Selassie was ignorant or aware of the extent of the famine. The exposure of corruption and the Kremlin's portrayal of Ethiopia as backward contributed to a popular uprising, leading to the fall of Haile Selassie and the rise of Mengistu Haile Mariam. The economic crisis, fueled by military mutinies and high oil prices, further eroded the government's support. In February 1974, riots erupted, prompting the emperor to address the nation, yet discontent persisted. Eventually, the Derg, a committee of military officers, took advantage of the government's turmoil and deposed Haile Selassie on September 12, 1974. He was confined to house arrest and his family members were imprisoned. Haile Selassie spent his final months believing he was still the emperor, while executions of former officials occurred without trial. This marked the end of the Solomonic dynasty. On August 27, 1975, Haile Selassie's death was announced, attributed to respiratory failure following complications from a prostate examination and operation. However, conflicting accounts emerged. Dr. Asrat Woldeyes disputed the government's version and denied any complications, stating that Haile Selassie had been in good health. In 1994, Former military officers were found guilty of strangling the emperor in his bed in 1975. They were charged with genocide and murder, supported by documents revealing a high-level order from the military regime to assassinate Haile Selassie for leading a feudal regime. Evidence, including the regime's official seal and signatures, has confirmed the authenticity of these documents. In 1992, Haile Selassie's remains were discovered under a concrete slab on the palace grounds. His coffin was placed in Bata Church, 
near the resting place of his great uncle, Menelik II. On November 5, 2000, the Ethiopian Orthodox Church held a funeral for Haile Selassie, though the government declined to declare it an official imperial funeral. While prominent figures within the Rastafari movement, like Rita Marley, participated, many Rastafari rejected the event, disputing the authenticity of the bones and questioning whether Haile Selassie had truly died in 1975. Haile Selassie had six children with Empress Meninesfa, Princess Tenegnwerk, Crown Princess Fa Wasan, Princess Zenebuwerk, Princess Tsehai, Prince Makoan, and Prince Sala Selassie. Descendants of Haile Selassie have been involved in public disputes, including the auction of his Patek Philippe watch in 2017, which sold for $2.9 million. Haile Selassie is revered as God incarnate by some followers of the Rastafari movement, which originated in Jamaica during the 1930s under the influence of Leonard Howell, a follower of Marcus Garvey's African Redemption movement. He is seen as the Messiah who will lead Africans and the African diaspora to freedom. Known by titles like Conquering Lion of the Tribe of Judah and King of Kings of Ethiopia, his lineage is believed to trace back to Solomon and Sheba. Rastafaris interpret these beliefs as the fulfillment of prophecies in the Book of Revelation, recognizing him as the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Conquering Lion of the Tribe of Judah, and Root of David. The Rastafari faith in Haile Selassie as a divine incarnation grew after news of his coronation reached Jamaica. Especially through articles in Time magazine, in 1961, a delegation from Jamaica, consisting of Rastafari and non-Rastafari leaders, visited Ethiopia to discuss repatriation and other matters with the emperor. Haile Selassie assured them of his assistance in the repatriation cause. He later visited Jamaica on April 21, 1966, where approximately 100,000 Rastafaris gathered to greet him. Despite initial chaos, Ras Mortimer Plano, a respected Rasta leader, calmed the crowd, allowing Haile Selassie to descend from the plain. This event, known as Grunation Day, is considered a pivotal moment for the Rastafari movement. He also advised them not to emigrate to Ethiopia until they had liberated the people of Jamaica, coining the phrase, liberation before repatriation. Haile Selassie's respectful attitude toward Rastafaris continued, and he provided support for the establishment of the Ethiopian church in the Caribbean, Rita Marley, Bob Marley's wife, converted to Rastafari after witnessing Haile Selassie's visit to Jamaica. She claimed to have seen stigmata-like marks on his hand, reinforcing her belief in his messianic status. Haile Selassie's association with the Rastafari movement gained wider recognition through the popularity of Bob Marley. In a recorded interview in 1967, Haile Selassie denied claims of his divinity, stating that he was mortal and would be succeeded by the next generation. However, some Rastafaris interpret his words differently, neither denying nor affirming his divine nature. In 1948, Haile Selassie donated land in Shashamane, Ethiopia, to the Ethiopian World Federation for the Settlement of People of African Descent who had supported Ethiopia during the war. Rastafari families settled in Shashamane, forming a community that still exists today, though tensions with the local population have arisen due to land allocation, Haile Selassie's role in the Rastafari movement, his visit to Jamaica, and his actions toward Rastafaris have had a significant impact on the faith and its followers.